it may be through some foreign grace, and unfamiliar charm of face, it may be that across the foam which bore her from her childhood's home, by some strange spell, my Katie brought, along with English creeds and thought entangled in her golden hair some English sunshine, warmth, and air I cannot tell, but here today, a thousand billowy leagues away from that green isle whose twilight skies no darker are than Katie's eyes, she seems to me, go where she will. An English girl in England still I meet her on the dusty street, and daisies spring about her feet, or, touched to life beneath her tread, an English cow slip lifts its head, and, as to do her grace, rise up the primrose and the buttercup. I roam with her through fields of cane, and seem to stroll an English lane, which, white with blossoms of the May, spreads its green carpet in her way as fancy wills, the path beneath is golden gorse, or purple heath and now we hear in woodlands dim their unarticulated hymn, now walk through rippling waves of wheat, now sink in mats of clover sweet, or see before us from the lawn the lark go up to greet the dawn all birds that love the English sky throng round my path when she is by the blackbird from a neighbouring thorn with music brims the cup of morn, and in a thick, melodious rain the mavis pours her mellow strain. But only when my Katie's voice makes all the listening woods rejoice he hear, with cheeks that flush and pale the passion of the nightingale and on the pictures round her change, and through an ancient town we range, where to the shadowy memory clings of one of England's Saxon kings, and which to shrine his fading fame still keeps his ashes and his name quaint houses rise on either hand but still the airs are fresh and bland, as if their gentle wings caressed some newborn village of the west, a moment by the Norman tower we pause, it is the sabbath hour and o'er the city sinks and swells the chime of old St. Mary's bells, which still resound in Katie's ears as sweet as when in distant years she heard them peal with jock and dine a merry English Christmas in we pass the abbey's ruined arch, and statelier grows my Katie's march, as round her, Wearied with the taint of transatlantic pine and paint, she sees a thousand tokens cast of England's venerable past. Her reverent footsteps lastly claims the younger chapel of St. James, which, though, as English records run, not old, had seen full many a sun, ere to the cold December gale the thoughtful pilgrim spread his sail. There Katie in her childish days spelt out her prayers and lisped her praise, and doubtless, as her beauty grew, did much as other maidens do across the pews and down the aisle sent many a bow bewildering smile, and to subserve her spirit's need learned other things beside the creed there, too, today her knee she bows, and by her one whose darker brows betray the southern heart that burns beside her, and which only turns its thoughts to heaven in one request, not all unworthy to be blessed but rising from an earthlier pain than might beseem a Christian fain. Ah, can the guileless maiden share the wish that lifts that passionate prayer, is all that peace that breast within good angels, warn her of the sin, alas, what boots it, who can see a willing victim of the wave who cleanse a soul that loves its guilt or gather wine when wine is spilt we quit the holy house and gain the open air, then, happy twain, adown familiar streets we go, and now and then she turns to show, with fears that all is changing fast, some spot that's sacred to her past, here by this way, through shadows cool, a little maid, she tripped to school, and there each morning used to stop before a wonder of a shop where, built of apples and of pears, rose pyramids of golden spheres, while, dangling in her dazzled sight, ripe cherries cast a crimson light, and made her think of elfin lamps, and feast and sport in fairy camps, whereat, upon her royal throne most richly carved in cherry stone, Titania ruled, in queenly state, the boisterous revels of the f-vertical bar caritete, t was yonder, with their horrid noise, dismissed from books, she met the boys, who, with a barbarous scorn of girls, glanced slightly at her sunny curls, and laughed and leapt as reckless by as though no pretty face were nigh, but, here the maiden grows demure indeed she's not so very sure, that in a year, or haply twain, who looked here failed to look again, and sooth to say, I little doubt some azure day, the truth will out.
that certain baits in certain eyes caught many an unsuspecting prize, and somewhere underneath these eaves a budding flirt put forth its leaves as not the sky a deeper blue, have not the trees a greener hue, and bend they not with lordlier grace and nobler shapes above the place where on one cloudless winter morn my Katie to this life was born ah, folly. Long hath fled the hour when love to sight gave keener power, and lovers looked for special boons in brighter flowers and larger moons but wave the foliage as it may, and let the sky be ashen grey, thus much at least a manly youth may hold, and yet not blush, as truth if near that blessed spot of earth which saw the cherished maiden's birth no softer dews than usual rise, and life there keeps its wonted guise yet not the less that spot may seem as lovely as a poet's dream, and should a fervid faith incline to make thereof a sainted shrine, who may deny that round us throng a hundred earthly creeds as wrong, but mean afar, which yet unblamed stalk by us and are not ashamed. So, therefore, Katie, as our stroll ends at this portal, while you roll those lustrous eyes to catch each ray that may recall some vanished day, I, let them jeer and laugh who will stoop down and kiss the sacred seal so strongly sometimes on the sense these fancies hold their influence, that in long well-known streets I stray like one who fears to lose his way the stranger, I, the native, she, myself, not Kate, had crossed the sea, and changing place, and mixing times, I walk in unfamiliar climes, these houses free to every breeze that blows from warm Floridian seas, assume a massive English air, and close around an English square, while, if I issue from the town, an English hill looks greenly down, or round me rolls an English park, and in the broad I hear the lark thus when, where woodland violets hide, I rove with Katie at my side, it scarce would seem amiss to say, Katie, my home lies far away, beyond the pathless waste of brine, in a young land of palm and pine, there, by the tropic heats, the soul is touched as if with living coal, and glows with such a fire as none can feel beneath a northern sun, unless, my Katie's heart attest, tea is kindled in an English breast such is the land in which I live, and, Katie, such the soul I give. Come, ere another morning beam, we'll cleave the sea with wings of steam, and soon, despite of storm or calm, beneath my native groves of palm, kind friends shall greet, with joy and pride, the southern and his English bride.